We're now going to talk about a second kind of line integrals, which is line integrals with respect to x or y. So as before, let C be a parameterized curve. So that means that we have an interval a, b, and we take a point t in this interval, and it's mapped to some point r of t in the plane, and let's write its components as x of t, y of t. Okay, and let f be a function on c. And we're going to define two new kinds of line integrals. So first of all, there's the integral over c of f dx. And this is the integral from a to b of f of x of t, y of t, times x prime of t dt. And there's also the integral over c of f dy, which is the integral from a to b of f of x of t, y of t, y prime of t. Right, so this is maybe a little less intuitive than integration with respect to arc length, and it takes a little getting used to. So let's just compare integration with respect to arc length. So the integral over C of f ds is the integral from a to b of f of x of t, y of t, square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. Dt. Okay, so these are all kind of similar. You're integrating from a to b of f of x of t, y of t times something. And what's the something? Well, at arc length, this is the length of the velocity vector. Well, here, this is just the um, well, it's the x component of the velocity vector. And here we have the y component of the velocity vector. All right, so we're always weighting f by something. Um, here this weight is always positive, or, or unless, it's, unless we're stopped, in which case it's zero. We have a non-negative weight, but here x prime and y prime can be negative sometimes. So for example, suppose f is always equal to 1. Okay, Then we know that the integral with respect to arc length is the length of the curve. What's the integral of 1 with respect to x? Well then, here we have f is equal to 1, and we're just integrating x prime of t. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is x of b minus x of a. So in other words, it's the total displacement of x as we move along the curve. Okay, so the curve maybe is over here. So here's x of a, y of a, and here's x of b, y of b. So we're just saying, what is the net change in x as we move along this curve? So in this integral, so here x prime is positive, then there's some negative x prime over here, then there's some more positive x prime over here, and it all adds up to x of b minus x of a. And likewise, the integral over c of 1 dy equals y of b minus y of a. And of course, we know from before that the integral of receive 1 ds is just the length of the curve. Okay. Now, you could ask, to what extent does this depend on the parameterization? So we know that the integral with respect to what, with respect to arc length, does not depend on the parameterization as long as we don't backtrack. 
what about integrals with respect to x or y? So here's an important fact. That integral over c of f dx and integral over c of f dy do not depend on the parameterization And you can even allow backtracking but with one exception which is that if you switch the endpoints of the curve you switch the sign. So in other words, if instead of starting, I mean, if you have a curve over here, so here's here's some point P and here's some point Q, okay, and let's and let's say that you know R of A equals P and R of B equals Q. So if you switch so that R now R of A is equal to Q and R of B is equal to P, that's what I'll call sort of switching the direction. So let's put an arrow on the curve. So as it is, we're starting at P and ending at Q. And if you switch the direction of that arrow, then you switch the sign of the integral. So if you reverse the direction of the curve, then these two integrals with respect to x or y get multiplied by minus 1. Right? And a fancier way to say this is that a curve with a chosen direction is called an oriented curve. So here the curve C is oriented. I mean the parameterization or orients it. But we could sort of forget about the parameterization and just still keep track of the arrow. Okay, so we could let minus c denote c with the orientation reversed. And then we could rewrite our fact as integral over minus c of f dx equals minus integral over c of f dx and integral over minus c of f dy equals minus integral over c of f dy. So in summary, the integral of f dx or f dy is well defined on an oriented curve. You don't need a parameterization, you just need an orientation. And if you switch the orientation, you switch the sign. So let's do an example to see how this works. I'll, I'll do that in the next lecture segment.